Hey guys, when we started this project, we were not sure how hard it would be to edit, record everything, and then eventually distribute. But then luckily, someone told us about Anchor. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. Secondly, they have creation tools that will allow you to record and edit directly from your phone or your computer. They distribute your podcast for you. And the best thing is you can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. We're in the state of confusion. Questions on your mind. Send in Letitia and Brandy. Gonna help you unwind. We're hanging out together, even though we're long. So pass it on over. Sorry, we're stoned. It's freezing in this room. What are you eating? Chocolate. <laughs> White, yummy chocolate. Wow. What are these called? Do you know? Mm-mm. Oh, Lindor truffles. Oh, and- you fancy. <laughs> wow. Lindor truffles and white chocolate. I think they have a birthday cake version of that. Like a birthday truffle. What? It's real good. What do you mean a birthday truffle? Like a chocolate, like a white chocolate truffle, but it's like a birthday cake flavored with like sprinkles in it. Oh, I feel like it tastes like that. Maybe that's what it is. Can you... <laughs> Are you t- I, can you read the label? See. I thought it was just vanilla, but honestly, Lindor. Hmm, no, it doesn't say. Speaking so of long. birthday, you know we're we're a month out. Um, I'm, it's I'm not okay with it. Tizzle. One I month think we need to. Pre- I just think we pretend like it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like to do. Honestly, mm-hmm. I feel like if you know what would be very interesting experiment, what? like a really amazing social experiment. Okay. Ooh, do I need to write this? I was going to say, should this be a show? What if we didn't have birthdays at all? Like we were born Mm -hmm. and we never know our birthday. That would be crazy. I know. But like then would age matter? Not really. I know. And like. Same way. Not until you start looking haggard. I know, but at least like. I don't know. I just feel like it would change things. It would. You're right. Yeah, it really would. And I'm wondering if like, as we're getting older, we know we're getting older. So we kind of make ourselves start to not feel as good or not like, cause you don't look as, I don't know, like maybe it's all a mental thing. Probably. I feel like this, this couldn't be like its own story, but I do feel like it could be part of some like futuristic dystopian like movie story. or something <laughs> yeah. like within a movie. Yeah. That was part of it. Yeah. Like in the future, we don't have birthdays. That's crazy. Uh huh. <laughs> How stoned are you right now? Very. <laughs> what if we didn't have a birthday, but we did have a death day? We no. Need- okay. I mean, someone's already done that movie. I know, but not without birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that different. <laughs> You're a freak. Hmm. What are you even doing? I haven't talked to you all week. Working, but I see you haven't been. I see you've been out gallivanting all over the country. No, just gallivanting around Denver, Colorado. Was that fun? So fun. Me and wow. Keys out on the town for her birthday. There you go. Speaking of birthdays, it is nice to have a reason to party. Uh, no, it's not. It's not <laughs> worth it. It's not worth having the birthday that when you get to be my age that you have to dread and like feel like it's a bad thing. Even though I don't, I feel like it's a great thing that I'm just still lucky to be alive and healthy. And it, you know, like life is good, and I have gratitude for having all these years alive on this planet Earth. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. I guess, okay, so I recently posted a photo on Instagram of my mom and I. It was when we were in Palm Springs. And I don't know what it is about this specific photo, but, like, the amount of people that have pulled it up and been like, how does your mom look like this? Like, this does not make sense. Like, I feel like you're aging in reverse, and I feel like sooner than later, I'm somehow going to look older than you. No. That's what I'm thinking. I'm looking at it and I'm like, hmm. I do not think that. I don't know, Tiz. But that's what I'm saying is like if I didn't know that in a month I was going to turn 54, like if I really wasn't thinking about that. It's not right. Oh. You look insane. You're working. And everyone loves the addicted tea. Do you know where you got that? 
Etsy. Etsy, of course. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I feel like if I didn't know I was getting older, because I wouldn't remember, didn't know my birthday. And I I don't know. I just feel like I'd feel different. Maybe. Shall we go into a little off limits from this conversation? Good. Just because I'm dying to tell you about this new show I started. Ooh, what is it? Okay, first of all, though, before we talk about that brilliant show, I just watched a movie on, it was probably Netflix, when we talk about things that tick me off that got made, and Mm -hmm. that, like, who really thought this was a good idea? I just watched another one. It was the worst thing I've ever seen. Let me, I've got to pull it up. It's a movie. Which one was it? Is it? It is called... What lies below? Mm. I, I I honestly just have no words. There was one more I felt this strongly about that I, I just like I'm shocked, like just absolutely shocked. I didn't even make it till the end. I had to turn it off. It was that bad. No. So, yes. But anyway, I just started watching a show called. Hold on, got to look it up. Something secrets. I am really so. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> wait, hold on. You're killing me. Okay, let, I'll, I'll tell you what it was called in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> honestly, uh, where did on Amazon? Yes, Amazon, and it's free with your Amazon. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> you're I not okay. <laughs> I need you to do something before our guest comes on because I am scared. Oh, oh, I found it. Tell me your secret. And it's good? Yes. It is so good. Who's Uh, it? um, Nobody I really knew at all. Really good. You got to stick with it. It starts out the first episode slow, but I like the way it's shot. Amy Brennerman's on it? Yes. She is so good in it. Brennerman. That's the only name I recognize. It's it's amazing. You have to watch it. Like, I got so sucked in. And again, it is a little slow, but for some reason, I like it. It's really good. Hmm. I just, it's it's really, really good. Now, I'm only getting ready to start episode four. So, if this ends, if the whole series ends terribly, you can't blame me because I actually am only just getting ready to start the fourth episode. But I really like it. It's really, really good. Okay. Honestly, though, it's, like, intense. Yeah, well, (laughs) it says, uh, I'm looking at it right now. It says, content advisory, violence, drug use, and foul language. Honestly, (gasps) it does make me cringe. Ooh. You want to know what made me cringe? Real quick story. I was in Denver this weekend, and we obviously Ubered to the airport Monday morning when we were leaving. It was me and two of my my friends, my girlfriends. And we were in the car. We get in the Uber. We're just like squashed in the back seat. And the, this dude driving who like already kind of looks like a creep, but he had like a really good rating on Uber. So I was like, it should be fine. We get going and he's like, hey, so uh, do you guys mind? I was listening to a novel before I picked you guys up, but it's very violent. Would that bother you if I turned that back on? And we literally, the three of us just sat there in silence. Like none of us wanted to be the one to be like, uh, no, we don't want to listen to that. So literally nobody was speaking. So I was like, I mean, uh, I don't care. Uh, it's, it's up to you guys. You, What do you guys think? Thinking one of them would be like, yeah, can we not? No one said that. So I was like, I mean, yeah, I guess like do your thing. He puts it on and it is the creepiest thing. <laughs> First of all, listening to books, I just I'm, can't get on board. Like I don't understand it. It's like talking in character and just oh, that it's, sounds terrible. It's so terrible. And but like he was not Wait, wrong. So one pe- one person does the whole book. Yes, it's so weird. That's and, why the podcasts are so much better because it's different people that are in. Different I know, characters. and it's real. Hello. Yeah. But anyway, it was very violent. The what the person was reading, and we I would literally we were all looking at each other like. This is how people die. Like, this guy's for sure a creep. <laughs> I mean, that would be scary. It was weird. I put, Thank God I had AirPods and I put them in, but he was freaking me. Oh, my God. Like, if I had been alone, I would have been freaked. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what I would have done. I'm, I would have, like, jumped out of the car with it moving. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if I was stoned, I'd be so paranoid. Oh, my God. And we were in Denver, so anyway. <laughs> 
It was freaky. <laughs> but I was going to tell you something else. I know I forgot. Oh, you were. <laughs> <sighs> when are we going to plan our trip in July? <laughs> when I can breathe, I will start planning the trip. <laughs> this weekend, next week, I'm so slammed. But uh, Molly said that we might be going to New York. Now, what you could do <laughs> oh, God. is meet me in New York. No. And let's go to Montauk for like three days. No. Can't be gone that long and then go to Tulum. I want to go to Montauk so bad. You can do these things without me too, you know. By myself? Yeah, it's fun. I am not going to Montauk <laughs> alone. I do a lot of things by myself. I love it. You don't like to travel alone. That's boring. It's kind of, actually, it's really, it's, there's, there's something up to it. A lot of people travel yeah. alone. Kirsten went all the way to Patagonia by herself. Because that's, oh, maybe I'll make Kirsten go. <laughs> she honestly might. I'm if it's a see. weekend. I love her. I could hang with her all the time. Oh my God, we were at a thing last night. We were at, so I'm really good friends with Brian and Brittany Kelly. So Brian is half of Florida Georgia Line and he just released, a f- I think it's four songs. He's putting out solo music and I'm so excited for him. So we were at his it's listening. Like Beach Cowboy or something? It's called Beach Cowboy. And we were at his listening party last night. And first of all, he reminds me so much of dad. It's absolutely insane. He was given a big speech before they played the music. And he was like, you know, this is this is my music. Like, you're going to hear my voice and see me up there on the screen. But this is our music. Everybody in this room. And I was like, oh, this is so dad. <laughs> He's the cutest. But anyway. They're um, so cute. And I think I'm, I love this whole Beach Cowboy thing. Yeah, it's really, really, it's just really unique and it's just so him, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. So it was really, really cool. Wait, where was I going with that? Wait, Not. is it already out? I think it just came out today. So cool. I follow him on the gram. He's oh, so you. awesome. You. Well, I guess we could tell the stoners that we're having Brittany on the podcast next week, actually. She's going to be love right. her. So that's going to be really exciting. They she, are living the dream. She, yeah. And Brittany's just so cool. Why was I talking about going out? Oh, because, okay, Kirsten, uh, full circle. So we were at Brian's listening party and somebody literally came up to us and was, and like went to, like was talking to me, somebody I know, and was like, oh my God, uh, I was with my friend Kirsten. They were like, I literally from over there thought you were Kendall Jenner. She was like, I literally was like, oh, Kendall Jenner's here. And then walked up and it was Kirsten. <laughs> Love it. I know. Kirsten was like, oh my gosh, that's the biggest compliment. But I was like, actually, I can kind of see it. Yeah. Like, I get it. And she had her hair like pulled back and, I, and it was like looked short. And I was like, I t- actually totally understand why that person thought that. That's so cute. It was funny. But anyway, so Brittany, who's coming on next week, she has her own clothing line called Tribe Kelly. And when I tell you guys, this girl does every single part of the process for her clothing line. She designs every single piece. She like does all the branding, the photo shoots, the promo, the marketing. Like She does all of it. She is a boss and she's a mega stoner. So my mom's going to be pumped to have her on. Well, and I just remember, yes, like even when I met her years ago, she was a boss. Mm-hmm. Like she, you know, she was already starting Trob Kelly and just, I don't know. She was just a go getter. Mm-hmm. She was really awesome. Yeah. So she's going to be really fun to have on next week. Yeah. She's amazing. And she, could, she could tell us a little about Brian's solo project too. I'm sure. Oh, fun. Yeah. I can't wait to go listen to it. I think you're really going to like it. It's really good. I bet I will. I love the whole beach cowboy thing. I think it's so cute. Mm-hmm. They look almost like homemade videos, which I think is so cool it that they is. shot on the beach for all four of the songs. I love things like that, too, because I think it almost I think people love it because they almost feel you almost like you're a part of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When it's kind of it's just like a hangout like that and it's not so slick. I think mm-hmm. I don't know. I like it better. Yeah, it's really cute. Coffee and weed. That's how mm-hmm. she starts the day. Good. I have a serious meeting at one. Oh, you do <laughs> kind of serious meeting i mean it's like our weekly team molly meeting and i need to be on my game very serious mm-hmm. i was thinking i also had some hard design oh for one i'm gonna be starting to remodel the trailer very when soon. in a week they're gonna we're gonna go and do walkthroughs and everything so I've kind of already started, you know, picking out. I'm going to call this Tisha's trailer transformation. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, so the first thing that we're going to need is flooring. And Mm -hmm. so I wanted, like, I just love that beachy feel of a light hardwood floor. And I was thinking, oh, I can't really, I don't want to do hardwood. Like, it really does need to, you know, be 
good for, to be wet or sand or whatever. So went to Lowe's and found it is like dirt cheap. This waterproof laminate hardwood flooring. It looks as good as what I have in my house. No like, way. Look at this. Can you see? Kind of, yeah. Like, it's very light. It is light, but it is like the grain. Like it is just really, really, really awesome. Huh. And I was just shocked at how far laminate mm-hmm. floor floors this time. Because, you know, like just redoing my floors changed my entire house. Yeah. Like, from just dark and it just to like just so bright white and clean and that the light flooring did everything and I think usually I mean it's just so expensive but like I would literally put this in my house yeah it's pretty like, it is really pretty and like completely scratch resistant waterproof like the whole thing and it's like not even a dollar a square foot and it's just so pretty and it's called Brookside Oak But I'll have to put it up because honestly, stoners, if you're needing to redo your floors, this looks really good. Okay. Dear MTs, hold on, just take a second. Dear MT, I have a burning question for you. Do you ever take time off from smoking and give yourself a break, whether it's for a couple of days or a week or a month. I just, I'm finishing up a month off of smoking and I'm excited to get back to it. But, um, you know, do you ever just need a break from it? And if so, any tips for it or, you know, other ways to cope with anxiety or sleep um, whenever you just like need a break? In my opinion, for me, I was just too lazy to go to the store. So I thought, okay, I'm going to take a little time off, but it's actually been kind of nice, but I'm definitely, you know, excited to get back on it but yeah just wondering love the pod and it's such a cute little voice message that y'all have super cute made me smile have a good day bye cute you taking a smoking break these days or nah you know when i did take a smoking break was at the beginning of covid oh that's right and so i you know was so afraid just because i knew you know that covid had such an effect on your lungs that i was didn't want to smoke so i think it was really good for me too like i feel like i took a couple good months off from smoking and honestly it just made starting back so much better and i honestly have really truly been thinking about taking another break so no i do think it can be good I really do. And uh, actually, that just maybe you inspired me a little bit to go ahead and 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 take a break for a minute, because I do think it's probably really good to do that. Well, if you could hurry up and take a break now so that by next week's pod, you're back (laughs) on. That would be great. Oh, gosh. But no, I didn't take other things for sleep or do anything like that. So, okay, got one more for this week, I think. Let's see. Hey, Tish and Brandy, it's Sarah. I'm calling from, oh, wait, sorry, I'm stoned. I'm not calling. I'm leaving a voice message. (laughs) Anyways, I'm calling or I'm leaving a message from Winnipeg, Canada. I just wanted to first and foremost apologize for the cold weather. Tish, I heard you talking about that the other episode. I just want to say it's not always that cold, I promise you. Anyways, my question is for Tish first. Um, If you weren't doing what you're doing right now, being a manager and an interior designer, what could you see yourself doing in an alternate universe? What job would you imagine yourself doing? Same question goes for you, Brandy. Also, just want to say I love you, ladies. I honestly just discovered you. have really enjoyed your energy listening to your podcast. I also loved your show. So that's it. Sending love from Canada. She is hysterical. That was one of the funniest intros on a message I've heard. Hysterical. But um, you know what? I should have been as a dancer. Oh, boy. (laughs) I should have been a dancer because I am a good dancer. You are insane. I'm just like, I am. But I should have been a dancer. But now at this point in my life, hmm. What could I be (laughs) instead of a manager and interior designer? Hmm. (laughs) No, you ain't got no other skills, huh? I'm trying to think about that. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Still a dancer? (laughs) No. Uh, (laughs) Maybe I'll be like a matchmaker. Oh my gosh. That's not really a thing. I'd be good at that. Would you? I don't know. Have you ever match made anyone? Yeah. Who? I didn't wow. really match make them. I encouraged it. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. I don't think anybody else? I don't know. I just thought like I'd be really well, good. You'd be a horse trainer. Well, I was gonna say that's the obvious answer, but I do think about all the time because I do love it so much. I do feel like I could have really loved photography. 
And I do feel like that's something if I needed to do something later in life, like, I'm sorry, no one takes better Instagram photos than me. Like I, t- I get the lighting right. I get the edit right. I get the angle right. Like I'm a freaking pro. So you if really all are. else fails, <laughs> I'm you just going to be the travel God. Yeah. But that you can't make money doing that. Oh, photographers make decent money. Yeah. They make great money. So that's, that's my backup plan. Good. Okay. Well, I'll be a matchmaker and then you take their pictures. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, we got a we have a guest this week. Uh-huh. We got to get with the program. I'm actually super pumped because this guest is a friend of mine. Uh, my mom knows her too. How long have we known Caitlin Crosby? Honestly, a very long time. Because I, yeah. I remember. I mean, it's nuts. Like we have known her for a long time. I like, know. Like I met her when I was living in LA, which in itself was pff, was it like a decade ago? That is, mom. I think it's been almost a decade that I've been back in Nashville. Oh yeah. my God, I am old. So I've known Caitlin for a while. And when I met Caitlin, she was doing music and she had grown up in LA. So she's like one of those rare people that's actually from Hollywood and grew up there. And her dad, uh, I think he, I know he like discovered some like yeah, acting talent in the day. So yeah, agent, manager, something like that. So she like totally has grown up like in the entertainment industry. And I met her, she was doing music, but she had just started a company called The Giving Keys. And I just was like, so fascinated. Just, by even, yeah. I think it was an idea. Yeah, maybe like I was I remember like when she started it and launched it and it's just the coolest freaking concept. Basically, the Giving Keys employ employs people that are trying to transition out of homelessness in downtown LA and the the company makes jewelry and all the jewelry it started with just necklaces and all the jewelry is made out of keys. And these keys have words on them and you can customize the keys and pick whichever word you want. So like for example, strength hope, courage, fearless, like words like that, that are inspiring. And then the idea of it is that you wear your key, your necklace, and that when you meet somebody who needs the message on your key, you give it away and like pay it forward in a sense and tell them the same, like wear this key, you know, like I feel encouraged to give it to you and then you pass it on. And it's just such a cool thing. And so she employs these people and helps them get out of homelessness. She's literally helped 22 people move into permanent housing and announced she made makes earrings, bracelets, like all kinds of stuff. Her products are sold in Nordstrom, Anthropology, Fred Siegel, Kitson, and almost 2,000 other retail stores around the world. So like Caitlin has just taken this company, like it was an idea and I have gotten to see her grow it into this massive thing. And not only is she a great businesswoman, but she's just helped so many people, which I think is so cool. So she's a huge inspiration to me. She's got some other things going. I know she had, had a book come out. We'll talk to her about that, but she's just a really cool girl. And I think you guys are really going to like her a lot. So Let's get Caitlin on. Great. That was a fabulous introduction. That's because I know her so well. I know. <laughs> Wait, is Caitlin on? I feel like there's somebody else on, but I can't see. Hi, guys. <gasps> Why can't I see you? I know. It just said, I'm going to try to sign off and go on my other browser because it was like, it, it says it's not supported on this browser. So I'm going to try Chrome. Okay. I'll be okay. right back. Okay. I want us all to see each other's faces so it feels like it's real life. Exactly. Okay, be back. Love it. Yes. Oh! There she is. There yeah. she is. I'm such a tech grandma normally. <laughs> whenever I figure out like changing browsers to Chrome, I feel like a genius. I bet. We're we're with you. <laughs> I mean, like honestly, for the first like four times we did this, I would literally have to download Skype every time because I could not figure it out. Like it was, it was insane. Like <laughs> I'm so bad at tech. Oh my Caitlin, God. you look amazing. Oh, thank you. I I really feel like my best self when I have fake tanner on. It's really <laughs> that simple. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, like, I, like, yeah, every two to three days, I just do a little on the face and yeah. it changes my life. <laughs> Complete game changer. Like if I don't, like I go from literally feeling like so like a non-attractive, depressed, sad person. And I'm, like I feel so good about it. Oh my gosh. I, like literally I'm ready for a splash to not belly. <laughs> I can put that self tanner on and wake up the next day and be like, oh, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Like, I'm like, I, I look great. Yeah. It makes every, it makes your hair look better. Or it makes your legs look better. It makes your- yes. Oh, I talk about this a lot and put up my favorites because honestly, it is one thing I cannot live without. Yeah. 
Yeah, same. Hi, guys. We have to have a, like, a wine. Yes. Wine night. Mm-hmm. Please, let's do. Next time Brandy's in this town, we have to do it. Yeah. Are you in LA, Tish? I am. Go I'm ahead. I'm in I'm in Toluca Lake right now for the next like until June. Oh my gosh. We have to have a, a wine night or let's something. Let's do it. You guys can FaceTime me in. Love that. <laughs> okay. Well, we gave you I gave you. My mom said it was the best intro I've ever given, actually. <laughs> I gave you a bit of an intro before you called in. Okay. Um, do you remember? What year we met? Like we've known each other for so long. How did who did we meet through? Was it Cody, your old band? Maybe. Did you know Cody before me? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. And th- how did you know Cody from writing together or something? No, from I think I kind of babysat her in Woodland Hills. Yeah, in Woodland Hills. That's so crazy. Gosh, we we've known each other over ten years, and I guess it makes sense because I was saying it's so it's so rare for someone to be from LA. Like everyone in LA is from somewhere else, but Cody was from LA. She was yeah. from Woodland Hills, and then you also grew up in LA. So I guess that makes total sense. I were the coolest. Yeah, that's why you guys are the best. Um, which in itself, like growing up in LA, must just be. So interesting. Like, I, if you want to talk a little bit about that, we absolutely can. But when I met you, you were pursuing music, and which I was too. So we had that in common. But you also, I think you had just launched The Giving Keys or were just about to launch it when we met. Oh, I'm just remembering you were like in our first photo shoot ever of our yes. first website. Our first, yes. you were the hero image of our website. You <laughs> Cody, our first ever Giving Keys website. I remember that. I remember that shoot. Oh, yeah. That is so weird. Here. We'll have to dig that photo up. Yeah, but I just, I remember, I mean, I thought it was just such a freaking cool thing that you were doing. And so for me to have seen it from the ground up like that, like I was there when you launched it, and now to see what you've done with it is just like one of the most inspiring things in the world. And that's why I knew we had to have you on the podcast because the stoners, that's our listeners, they love to feel inspired. And so I was like, oh, Caitlin Crosby is it. She is the one of the most inspiring people I know. We got to have her on. Yeah, because so many people, like especially young, people like they just have so many questions and and they're feeling disappointed that they're kind of behind in their lives like we get those questions a lot like how do I not compare myself to where other people are in their lives right now and like what if I don't want to go the traditional route and I want to start my own business but that's too scary and so like you kind of are the perfect person to talk about that Yes, I did not finish college. I I went for two seconds and I was a philosophy major because I think too much, which is <laughs> nothing. But yeah, I was doing music like you. And I always just loved writing about issues that I was passionate about from especially growing up in LA and my dad is in entertainment and kind of like you guys, I was around all these people that were so, you know, successful and rich and had had everything you could ever want but there was like this emptiness like it was like no one was ever really happy or fulfilled and then I was always so intrigued by people that were living on the streets because I'm like what is your story your story is more interesting to me than like I don't know my dad's famous clients that just have a million handbags and whatever I was like okay been there done that heard that story a million times like I want to know like what is your story and so I would always write songs about issues like that. I mean, I before I started Giving Keys, I had a song about homelessness, about this woman I met outside of a Starbucks who was homeless. And it just felt like I, I offered to buy her food. And she's like, oh, no, that's okay. I just, I just thank you for talking with me. And I remember I was crying, just like people, we all want the same thing. And this one of my old songs from 100 years ago called The Same Inside. It's like, we all just want to feel loved really at the end of the day and feel seen. But yeah, so I was on tour, was making, uh, passing through on my little tours, nothing big. And the hotel room key in New York was cool. I put around my necklace and I was at a locksmith and I was like, oh, can you engrave Love Your Flaws? Because I had a website at the time with Brie Larson uh, called like, about body image issues called Love Your Flaws. And then I saw all these old keys on the side and I said, oh, while you're at it, can you do Faith, hope, love, strength, believe, inspire, let go. And so he did. And then I I took my cuticle clippers and tweezers, perfect for the people listening that are creative and don't know what they want to do. Um, I literally started making jewelry out of my tweezers and cuticle clippers. And I started making them and selling them on tour at the merchandise tables with my CDs. And then these, you know, Fakakta key necklaces with these words. <laughs> And then they started selling out more than my CDs. So I was like, okay, well, thanks for the show. Bye. <laughs> so I knew people were really resonating. And That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
That is so good. Like, I did not know that story. Oh, well, then then I knew that because people needed these words so bad, I was like, wait a minute, I should, I want this to be different and unique, right? I just, I always want some, everything I do to be, yeah, unique. And so it's like, okay, let's not just make this about ourselves, right? Like, yes, we all need these words. Okay, but own your word, embrace your word, get a word that you need. But then I want you to pass it on and give it away, pay it forward to someone you feel needs it more than you, and then tell that person to pass it on, pay it forward to someone who needs it more than them. So people started writing me, like on MySpace at the time, which, yes. Uh, oh, I just gave my key away to someone who's about to commit suicide. I just gave my key away to someone going through a divorce. I just gave my key away to someone who has cancer. I just gave my key away to someone, you know, who has an eating disorder or blah, blah, blah. And so I was bawling my eyes out reading all these stories. I'm like, these keys are changing people's lives. I need to make a website and I want the money to go to some sort of good cause. And so I, I, one day I was walking on Hollywood Boulevard. I left this like churchy thing and I left like crying and I was like, what can I do? I want to help people. Like I felt so inspired. And, and I saw this couple, they were, they were experiencing homelessness. They held up a sign that said ugly, broke and hungry. And it caught my eye. And you know, on Cahuenga and uh, Hollywood Boulevard, there's a, that yeah. restaurant kitchen 24. Oh yeah. We had wine. It's like, it, I think this is so funny. Like people are always like, oh, we don't want to give people that are homeless um, money because we don't want them to buy alcohol. I bought them alcohol. I was <laughs> <laughs> like, let's all just enjoy wine. Like one of the girls, she got red wine and then the guy Rob got like a beer and I got wine and we had steak and whatever. It's like, why not? We all need some we need that sometimes. But anyway, so then I just got their life story. And then the girl said she liked making jewelry. And I had my aha moment. I was like, oh, you are the missing link to the giving keys. Do you guys want to be my business partners? And they were like, who is this crazy? Lady? <laughs> <laughs> that I, is that. I bought like hammers and went to the engrave. I went to the locksmith, bought engraving equipment. And I started paying them to make the keys and they would do them on the side of the road and alleys. And I just hustled and got them into stores and then got them into Fred Siegel. Then we worked our way up to freaking Nordstrom and Starbucks and places all around the world. And then fast forward to they saved up enough money, got their own apartment. Then we started partnering up with all the different nonprofits around the issue of homelessness. And we got to hire over 140 people that are trying to transition out of homelessness. That is amazing. It's just massive now. It's so incredible. So something that I think is interesting is I think a lot of, and I have some friends that that started like, I guess like give back companies, like something with some sort of like charitable component, I guess. I don't know. But I, I think like a lot of people find it hard to balance like making a business work and profit enough to keep going while also being able to give back and and really like enough money to help change people's lives. So like, was there anything that stands out to you about how you were able to do that to like grow a business, but also help people? Yes, I think it's two things. One, I think it's consumers can smell when you're just doing something because it's like the thing to do, like it became after a while, it kind of became trendy to have a give back brand, which is great. It's a good trend. But I think because it, the, the market became so saturated. Mm-hmm. Now I started a, another line called Brave and Love after my kids. It's like a kit, like a clothing line, but it's for all ages, but like a lot of, you know, predominantly for kids. I thought that oh, we would just take all the customers from giving keys. Like we have the same mailing list, the same, you know, social media and push it to them. And it's like not translating. And we're also Mm -hmm. like, you know, a dollar from each shale is helping feed hungry kids. It's just so saturated right now. Mm -hmm. Um, It was also timing. That number two, I think we got in at the right time because it was like Tom's had just started. They were like the first one. And then it was like massively a ton of people doing it. So I think, yeah, I think it's kind of hard to break into that that world unless you have a few special differentiating factors. Like the that's like the big, you know, important word, the differentiating factors. And I think what made Giving Keys so special was that we had two. We had two differentiating factors. One, the pass it on, pay it forward movement. And mm-hmm. some customers really only resonated with that and didn't even know we did anything with the world of homelessness. And then some people only resonated with the homelessness part and they're like, I'm not going to give this away. I'm not going to pass it on. So right. I, we had kind of got, I think that is true. Yeah. I, I do think that's why it connected so hugely. It was the two components to yeah. for sure. Yeah. I remember, uh, and I'm sure there's been more than this, but I remember you, when you, you guys posted about like Justin Bieber was wearing one. 
mm-hmm. or what? And, and so like, how, how much do you think like stuff like that made an impact on helping get the word out too? is like people like Justin wearing it? Honestly, if I can be completely honest, it, that is kind of the most helpful thing. And I think, you know, in, in like our highest year of sales, a few years ago, we could afford a PR person. And so they would, you know, get it to the right people. And then magazines would then pick it up or um, different stores would want to take us. We got into Kitson, which was our biggest number one account for years, started seeing it on um, celebrities and that made them take us seriously. And then even just, yeah, so that helped so much. And then when things started slowing down for different reasons, And we didn't have a PR company and we didn't have any celebrities wearing it. It was like a huge, like our sales went down and then it's just like a, like a domino effect. It's like, okay, well then if you can't afford that, then that's not going to help you here. So then that means you also can't afford ads, which means Mm -hmm. you're going to go down here. And then that means you also, that's going to, you know, negatively affect this. So now you're not going to be able to afford photography. So now we're going to have to repurpose yeah, photos that aren't as cool and airbrush, Photoshop, new new products onto old pictures, kind of be gorilla style with everything. Yeah. Okay. So it it it's just sitting here listening to you talk about all of this, like blows my mind that you run all of this. Okay, but now you have two kids. How the heck do you juggle two kids and the giving keys and the book you just came out with and all of the things, Caitlin? Oh my gosh. So Okay. I'm, yes, newly a single mom mode, um, which has been obviously challenging, but I will say this, I will say, and I hope this really does inspire people because this has empowered me so much. I'm literally living in kind of my worst nightmare right now, to be honest, like being a single mom and having, you know, the husband taking a different path. But you know what? Now that I'm here and I'm living my worst fear, I'm like, you know what? It's not that bad. Like I can do it. And I think once we kind of have our biggest fears that happen to us or that happen for whatever reason, it's like once you kind of face your fear and realize you can do it, then it's like, oh, well, I can do anything if I can get through this. Okay. I love that you're saying that because that was this last year for me. Really? Yes. And it changed who I am completely. It really Um, did. Because with, because my biggest fear, there were two. Being alone. is living alone. And two was losing my mom. And both happened. And it honestly was the biggest growth period of my life where I was really faced with my two biggest fears. And then I got through them and it just was so empowering. You know, that's so interesting when you said about your mom, which that's actually what I have been thinking about, because that is also my biggest fear is when my, when I lose my parents, I'm like, I am not going to be able to handle that. But now that I'm going through this, I'm kind of like, okay, I'm in a trauma right now. And it's hard, but I'm making it through. And like, and I literally was telling myself, like, when that happens with my parents, it's going to probably be the same sort of thing. And like the grieving process and the ups and the downs of the highs and the ball, yeah. make it like letting yourself feel all the feelings. Yeah. Cause it's like, cause then when you let yourself do that, it's real. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. that's deep. Yeah. yeah. And all like the spiritual giants and like inspiring women that I've been talking to Lately, they all say the same thing. They all say it's all about like when we're going through these hard things and these traumas, it's like the only way we can get true healing is if we feel the feelings and like let ourselves like really grieve and it's not fun, but like the longer we put it off and try to numb ourselves, which I think we all do, like, you know, I kind of go back and forth to like, like I'll have Saturday morning when my kids go with their dad, I'll like be bawling my eyes out. I'm like laying, like I put on depressing music. I blew up the floor and I just like ball hysterically. But then I like Saturday night get real cute and maybe, you know, (laughs) I love it. Um, Yeah. And like, you know, A, B and C. And it's like, and then I kind of do, I have to like distract myself a little bit because I can't fully live only in the grief. So I kind of, um, but to answer your question, like how I get through it, I mean, I start my day off. I wouldn't do this normally, but I I wake up and with the kids, they wake up so early. So I'll put on like a, a Daniel Tiger, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood, something that's like healthy for them. <laughs> and then I'll make my coffee. And then I do a little morning devotional, the little like, like a five minute long little like guided prayer. And then I'll go back in my room, do a little like guided prayer. And I'll write down like my priority list for the day. And then I'll 
And then I'll say the serenity prayer. I'm really into the serenity prayer. I'm actually also living on Al-Anon right now. Do you guys know what Al-Anon is? What do you know? I've heard that. Okay. So AA is for people that are alcoholics. Uh Um, Al-Anon is for people that are in relationship with either alcoholics or addicts. Oh. Got it. So you go through, so as Al-Anon, I'm an Al-Anon. So I, I go through the 12 steps, just like people in AA or Narcotics Anonymous, NA, like they go through the 12 steps and they have a sponsor. I go through the 12 steps and I have a sponsor. Oh, wow. I have a sponsor. That's amazing. Yeah. I have a sponsor who's like a 60, 60 something year old gay man, Jewish gay man. And he's so blunt and, and like, he kicks my ass. Like he's like, oh my gosh. so like rude to me, but I love it. <laughs> Cause he's like my sponsors. Yeah. But I think, you know, so basically working the steps, I go to meetings, like on zoom, I try to get on a meeting like almost every other day. And so the serenity prayer is a big part of it that we start every meeting with grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. And yeah, I can't change people, places, or things. But grant me the serenity to accept things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. So that I can literally, like the only way I could get through this time, I think is like through that and my good friends and, and just pouring myself into work and knowing also like now it's kind of like this mama bear inside of me is like, well, I have to provide for my kids now and myself. It's like, I have to go and work hard and make it happen for them because I don't really have any other option, <laughs> but it's scary. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. It's like, I like fight feeling fearful and stressed a lot for sure. I mean, because it's, it sounds like it's a huge, like. I mean, and I guess it is just a huge life change in every aspect in some ways, I guess. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Okay. Before we let you go, I want to touch on your book. Uh, Is this the second book or the first book? It is my second book. That's what I thought. Okay. So tell us about both. Yeah, yeah. And I'd love to know about like the process of writing the book and like how involved you were. Did you have to like like I have, I have a friend that just wrote a book and he had to like go away in like into like isolation for three months in order to write it. So I'm just so fascinated about everybody's process, but I just love to hear about it. And of course, like tell the stoners about your books and um and how you found time to do that with all um, the other things. I like they're good stoner books, especially the first one. I feel like is a good stoner book because that's more a memoir and it's like um that one is called You Are the Key. But I, I I mean I go into like detail like TMI detail talking about like boob malfunction surgeries and scars and like body shame and like birthing stories. So if that's a good yeah. I but I I love 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 that book so much. That that book I always thought like if I ever were to write a book, same thing I would think like I would go out of town and blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. But no, I wouldn't like because I had like children and other work I had to do. And so I was like literally fitting it in like, Oh, an hour, I'm going to go in the back and write or like, mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. I just like made it work. And then the second one is I think a more, it's like a good gift book. It's so pretty. It is. Like, it's like, Ooh. And what I like about it is every chapter is a different word that we have on giving keys, like hope, love, faith, strength, believe, fearless, let go. And then there's at the end of each chapter is like a journal prompt. How cute. Mm. So they're like it's so cute. And I also love that it has some personal pictures and, you know, it's just like really cute. Yeah. And it's so good if you like, I mean, not even journaling, but just I think it's really good, like in the self-help way, just like getting yes. out to work on yourself. Like what do you most regret not doing? Why didn't you do it? What is holding you back from going all in on it? What are your response? What, which of your responsibilities could you let go of or outsource to give yourself more time for your top priorities? Like blah, blah, blah. So. This Asking is good, the tough questions. <laughs> this is a good book for the everyday, you know, just like going deeper into these words or a good gift book. I still read it every day. Oh, this is interesting. When I was going through the separation, we had Which just- I think you should write about in your next book Absolutely. and take people on that journey and then help them through it. Mm-hmm. That is a journey. Yes, for sure. I know. Oh yeah. When I was recording the audio book of this, the new book, Every Word Matters, I was literally, I needed to hear every word that I was reading out loud. You know, I was, I was recording it for the audiobook, but it was such a good reminder. I needed to hear it. And it was so much so that in the middle, we had, we took a break and, and the notary guy came to the recording studio with, I had to sign away our house, you know, together. And we like went in the parking lot and bawled our eyes out, like bawled, cried, holding each other. And then I went back into the recording booth to keep 
reading this inspiring quote unquote book, you know, in hopes that it's going to inspire other people. But it's like, oh yeah, no, no, I need to read. I need all these. Yeah. Books. I, I really believe it's like, yeah, it's helpful for me too as well. Wow. Well, I'm thinking about writing a book myself. She is. Ooh, I love <laughs> Uh, I've been throwing that around for a while. And, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like even for me, like there's probably things I need to hear. And I think just, I feel like there is a bit of therapy for I, sure. I should connect you with a girl who helped me write my first book. She's the best. She, she came over one day and she does a thing called book in a day. Um, then we, we ended up working together for months, but she helped. We took one day, nine to five, and she asked me a thousand questions about myself because I don't know how to write a book. I didn't know. And then she she brought flashcards and poster things. And then she put, she's like, ooh, that's a great line or that's a great title. And then she would put it on a flashcard and then we kind of put it in order. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah. And then on one wall, we had a whole wall of first day, chapter one through 12, the name of each chapter, because she would just like pull them out of me. And then we would go, we would, and then we put all the different storylines in order. And then my homework was I took a month, you know, to write different chunks. And then yeah. I would send them to her and my editor, the publisher. And then she would kind of fill in the blank spots, like the beginning of a chapter. And she would give it back to me. And then I would edit it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So, yeah. yeah. That's fascinating. I'm really considering it. So that's inspiring to know that, that, you know, that you had help and was, was it super overwhelming or no? No, it wasn't like it really felt so therapeutic. It felt I really think that too. I really think it would feel therapeutic. I love that for you. Me mm -hmm. too. And I think it's never been the right time until I think after losing my mom mm. that I don't know, I just felt like it opened up. So, like, like I said, it was just such a growth period for me. Wow. And like that maybe now is the time. And, you yeah. know, I, I really do. Your last chapter is like, you're going to have a revelation. And that's, that's another thing to answer your question that I'm like, how am I going to end this? I'm still like in process with some of yes. these things that I'm struggling with, quote unquote. And so I remember I went to a, my therapist and I was like, I need to have wisdom at the, about this issue here. And I don't have it yet. I haven't had my aha moment yet. And so I literally felt all this pressure, which was great because it kind of forced me to have the healing. It mm -hmm. forced me to get the revelation yep. I was on a timeline. And, um, and I literally went to this one session with her and it was like, it all came together and I had all, all my aha moments and that's chapter 12. And then I realized like the reason of life and that's what my, the lady who helped me write it, she said like every author feels that way. Like you don't have the ending until yeah. you are writing it. And then it'll like help you have like closure and ha help you have the revelation of like what life is all about while your readers are doing it at the same time. That's incredible. Well, I love this. Love it. Caitlin, thank you so much for coming on. Love you guys. You've been great. Before you go, tell the stoners where they can get the giving keys, where they can get your book and plug your socials because you're yeah. an inspiring Instagram follow as well. Thanks, babe. Yeah, mine is at Caitlin Crosby, C-A-I-T-L-I-N-C-R-O-S-B-Y. And then the giving keys at the giving keys and the giving keys.com. And then my clothing line is called Brave and Love which is cute too. And then the books are available where all books are sold. Yeah. yeah. We'll post all those links too on, on our social media for you when we put the episode out. Awesome. But well, I'm going to be in touch so that we can schedule wine night because there's just yep. so much more. Yeah. <laughs> I have to do an in Instagram story of how cute we all are right now. Yeah. Tish is taking the glasses off. <laughs> ordering some breakfast too. Oh, the fact that you're eating breakfast right now is insane. It's 2.20 here. <laughs> I haven't had any food. Thanks, I think also this angle is not cute. I am on. Why can't I speak English? You know why? Because I have a crush on a boy right now. Ooh. Not really. It's more of a like sexual healing friend. Ooh. <laughs> oh, see, can we please have you back on to talk about that? I know. Send you screenshots and you're going to die. Oh my God, please do. Send us pics immediately. All right. Okay, love you guys. Thank you so much. Love you, Caitlin. Bye. She is hysterical. I love her. My love. God. We just had such a great chat with Caitlin. She's just so awesome. So make sure you guys go check out, obviously, The Giving Keys. Make such great gifts. I, I've given them to so many people over the years for different d different reasons, birthdays, weddings, just all the things. So check that out. And I'm definitely going to go get her new book right now because it's I could so use some good. I could use some tabletop inspiration right now. I have it. 
I love it. I know. Um, okay. So what's really weird is that we usually record our podcast around 4 p.m., but today we did it at 11 a.m., but for some reason uh-huh. it has tricked my brain into feeling like it's 5.30 instead of 12.30, and I'm tired. Oh, and I, boy. And well, I, I have suggest, all day. I suggest a large cup of coffee. Okay. Well, I just ordered some breakfast from Heirloom, which is an amazing restaurant in Toluca Lake. If anybody's ever over this way, it's incredible. Um, I love to go eat and get prepared. Okay. Well, quickly before we go, I just um, I know we mentioned it before, but we do have Brittany Kelly on next week. I'm so freaking excited about that. So if you guys have any questions for Brittany, whether it's about Tribe Kelly or being a stoner or being a creative or being married to a country artist, anything you can think of that you want to ask Brittany, uh, you can call in and leave us some voicemails for her and she can take part in DMT next week. And that number is 818-839-0534. And if you're not in the United States, you can leave a voice memo on our Instagram. Just go in like you're sending a DM and you can just send an audio message and we'll, we can play that on the podcast as well. Awesome. Love y'all. Love you guys so much. Bye, stoners. Bye. Bye.